Happy Monday and welcome again to the front porch. Time again for another episode of Monday Meditations. Hope you have your Bibles. You're open to the book of Philippians. We're continuing to meditate upon one of Paul's prison epistles. I call it a prison epistle because he was believed to have been incarcerated in Rome at the time he wrote this. And isn't it interesting? When you look at the book of Philippians, there's a, there's a theme that keeps coming back over and over again, and that's one of joy. Joy in the face of hardships. Uh, we can have that. This is the peace that passes understanding that a Christian has in Christ Jesus. Uh, we suffer, yes, sometimes for the cause of Christ, but that is to glorify God in that. And we're going to be reminded in this context that, that though he started out the book emphasizing how much he was praying for the brethren in Philippi, he appreciates and, and covets their prayers for him as well as he is bound to Christ. He's going to talk about bonds. He's going to talk about his imprisonment in some ways, but he's more so focused on the fact that he is imprisoned to Christ. His, his bond of love it ties him to Jesus that wherever he goes, whatever he endures, he's going to do so in a, in a way that glorifies God and preaches and teaches the, the gospel of Christ to those who are around him. We're going to see that in this text. Today we're looking at Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 19. And keep in mind that idea of the bond that he had in Christ. Verse 12 says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, the continuance of the gospel, the proclaiming of the gospel, the spreading of the gospel, these things that have happened unto me. What has happened to him? Well, he, he's been hauled off to Rome and imprisoned in Rome. And, and a Roman prison would not be something that anyone would want to be in. Uh, it, is, it would be a bad situation, a very cramped, a very uh, inhumane position to be in. But they were concerned about him. He, he's making this aware. I know you're concerned about my well-being. I know you're concerned about the hardships that I've endured. But he said, I want you to understand that it's working out for good. God's going to use this to his glory to save many people. It's very reminiscent to the times in the Old Testament when Joseph was sold into slavery into Egypt and his brothers had that nefarious plan to get rid of him. But as you get to the end, after their father Jacob, Israel, has died, the brothers think, oh, he's going to take his wrath out on us now. And they were afraid. He said... Joseph said to them, you meant it for me for evil, but God meant it for good to save many people or much people alive this day. And he did just that. Sometimes what we think is a, a very bad situation, God can, can use for good. And he was doing that with Paul here. And he's going to emphasize that as you continue. Verse 13 says, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places as well that my bonds in Christ. Oh, yes, you see the chain. People could see the physical chain that he's shackled to and the imprisonment and the shame that goes along with that. But what stood out and what Paul is saying what stood out is his bond to Christ, his chain, his shackle, his bond servantness to Christ. That's going to show. And it's going to show in all the palace. Even those of Caesar's own household would know the gospel as a result of Paul's imprisonment. But not just in Caesar's household, in all places, everywhere that Paul went, he made that very clear that he was going to preach the gospel. Verse 14 says, And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He's, again, let me emphasize Paul is saying, you're concerned about my well-being, and that is appreciated. Keep praying for me, absolutely. But understand something that this is working out for good. The impact that Paul's imprisonment had on those who heard Paul, but not only that, as we just read in verse 14, the impact that Paul's preaching had on those who heard about him preaching, it was emboldening. It was, it was an encouragement to them that here's the apostle Paul. He's been beaten at times. He's been stoned at times. He's in prison now, and he's still preaching the gospel. If he can do it, then so can I. And that's the same message that God wants us to get today as we read letters such as this. Don't let Satan stop you any way, form, or fashion from spreading the gospel. You preach the gospel, you live the gospel, and you preach and teach the gospel wherever you go, whatever your situation may be. Let people know about the Jesus who can take a bad thing and make it good. He can take the broken thing and make it whole. 
That's what he's done in our lives. That's what he did with the Apostle Paul. And he was preaching that message wherever he went. And so some were emboldened, some were waxing confident, it says, by his bonds and the fact that he was preaching bound. And they were going to be bold and they were going to speak the word without fear. That's the positive aspects. Now, there's going to be some negative aspects he's going to point out as well in the next verse. But this negative aspect is, is, has a positive twist to it as well. And listen to what he says. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. Some, these bold people that he was talking about, emboldened to preach without fear, some are doing it for the wrong reasons. Now, there's something that needs to be understood as we're reading this. We're not talking about false teachers here. We're not talking about those who are, who are adding to the word or taking away from the word. No, he's talking about people who are preaching the gospel. They're preaching Christ. They're brothers in Christ but they're preaching it out of the wrong motives. The message is true. The, mo the mode behind that, the method behind that it is preaching the gospel, but the, the manners behind that, what they're doing in their heart is not affecting them in a positive way. And so he's making that clear. Some are doing it for envy. They're jealous of Paul. They're, they're wanting to promote themselves. They're wanting to make a name for themselves by preaching Christ. And they're wanting to maybe belittle Paul. Some of them maybe had had a, uh, a hatred toward Paul. It could be possible that some never got over the fact that the Apostle Paul was once a persecutor of the church. And well, surely they could be a better preacher than the Apostle Paul. Sadly, sometimes preachers get caught up in that that competition style of preaching today is I, I've got to be on every lectureship and I've got to be out there look at what I'm doing and every time you get on social media you see here's what I'm doing today here's what I'm doing today and look at me and and campaigning look at what I'm doing it's better for us isn't it to say look at what God is doing look at look at Christ see Christ don't see me that should be the attitude, should be the mode. But he said, some indeed are preaching Christ for envy and strife. Some are causing divisions. And don't listen to that preacher. Come listen to me. And so, but some also of goodwill. He said, there are some who are doing it for the right reasons. The, the, what they're preaching, all of them, what they're preaching is true. But some are doing it for the right reasons. So their preaching is going to influence people. All the preaching is going to influence people. But these that are preaching from goodwill is going to influence the people that hear them. But it's also going to be a, a benefit to the one who's preaching as well. God knows who are, who's doing what and why they're doing it, basically. He's all-knowing. He knows our hearts. He knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. And so he says then, elaborating on that more, verse 16, The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. They're preaching Christ, though, don't lose that. He's, he's saying they're still preaching Christ, even though they're trying to do it to add the out of contention and trying to add affliction to my bonds. I'm already bound, I'm already in prison, but they want to hurt me even more. It's a sad state, yes, it's a sad reality that that we have brothers and sisters in Christ who, who have so little love for God that they would belittle God's servants, that they would backstab, that they would slander, that they would try to run down God's people. It, it's a sad state of mind, but it's a reality, and Paul knew that. Paul understood that this was taking place. And he said, we're going to make sure we get them. We're going to make sure that we punish them. That's not what he said. He said, they're doing this sometimes to add afflictions to my bonds. That's, that's their motive. That's their means. They're preaching Christ, but that's their means. He says, though, a contrast, then verse 17, but the other of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Others are preaching out of love. They know that, that Paul's set. He's ready. He's fixed. He's, he's firm in his defense of the gospel. He's not doing this to promote Paul. He's doing this to promote Christ. And he, he was ready to defend that. And we need to be ready to defend the gospel. You remember what Peter said to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer or a defense to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you. Why do you have the hope that you have? Why are they asking that? They see it in us. They saw it, and some saw it in Paul, but some were trying to, to make merchandise of him, so to say. They're trying to do it out of the wrong mode, wrong 
manner of, of lifestyle that they're supposed to be living is one that, that glorifies and exalts Christ. Letting our light shine before man is important, yes, but doing it to glorify God is the right motive behind it. And so then he says in verse 18, what then? What am I going to do with this? What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Oh, that's one of those passages right there. That's one of those that just hits you right between the eyes. And if you've ever had someone stab you in the back, if you've ever had someone trying to to pull you down and trying to lift themselves up by stepping on you to get there and so forth, it's it's hard not to want vengeance. It's hard not to want them to get there. Their just deserves. But God knows how to take care of those situations, and God knows how to avenge, and he's a much better avenger than we are. But that's not the point either. The point Paul is showing us is, is the attitude of Christ. He said, I'm going to rejoice. Even in this hardship, even in this difficulty, even in the chains and the shackles that I'm in in a Roman prison, and the fact that I've got brothers out there who are trying to add affliction to my bonds, I'm going to rejoice that Christ is being preached. The gospel is being preached. I'm going to find my joy in that. I'm going to rejoice in that. I'm going to keep on rejoicing in that. Wow, what a, what a joy, what a, what a peace of mind, what an example the Apostle Paul is showing us in this text. Even in bonds, we can rejoice. Even when we're ridiculed and mocked, we can rejoice. Let God be God and let us be ourselves, be what we're supposed to be as much as we humanly can. And let's preach the gospel everywhere we go. Verse 19 then says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation or deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's showing the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's showing the disposition of Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus would say hanging on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What an attitude. Just as Stephen, when he was being stoned, and I doubt very seriously that Paul ever forgot that scene. When Stephen was being stoned, he saw Jesus standing, and he said, Lay not this sin to their charge. What an attitude. What a disposition. Here's Paul. He's being persecuted, yes, and he's even being slandered somewhat, and then trying to, people trying to add affliction to him, preaching the gospel out of all ways. But he said, I'm going to rejoice that Christ is being preached. The gospel, the good news is being preached, and I'm going to keep on rejoicing in that. And if Paul can do that, so can we. We can preach the truth. We can stay true to the word of God, even in hard persecutions and afflictions. Jesus would say in Matthew chapter 10, verses 22, you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Are we enduring? Remember what Jesus said, Re Revelation 2, verse 10, be thou faithful. Now, you're going to suffer some hardships and difficulties, but you be faithful even if it means your death and I will give you a crown of life. Sometimes you're going to have brothers and sisters who are going to try to add affliction to your bonds. But if they're preaching Christ, they're preaching the truth, they're preaching the gospel, rejoice that the gospel's being preached and keep on rejoicing that wherever you go, wherever they go, someone is getting an opportunity to hear and obey the truth. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.